in today's video, we are going to show you the most affordable way to make your own carbon fiber at home. And then we're gonna make a ring out of it. So the first step, we've got the basics laid out here, except for one thing, which we're gonna to run to Home Depot right now and go get, so let's go. Hi everyone, we're back from Home Depot and we've got a sheet of melamine. We're gonna cut this down and we're gonna turn it into a mold that we're gonna clamp down on some carbon fiber. So I'm gonna cut this big piece down. We don't need this much wood. Uh, we're gonna make a smaller sheet of carbon fiber. It's gonna make plenty of rings for us. So I'm gonna cut this down to be about a 12 inch by 12 inch slab. So we're gonna have two of them, you know, to clamp together and I'll show you how that works in just a minute. But for now, We've got these two pieces cut, and then we're gonna head back into the video studio to actually make the carbon fiber. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications because we're gonna have some other videos coming out soon, and I'm really excited about them, and you do not wanna miss them. So this is what raw carbon fiber looks like. If you've never seen it before, it is a fabric. That's how it starts. And this is a twill carbon fiber fabric, and we're gonna use this to make our sheet today. So I'm just gonna tape it off. This helps with weave distortion. It helps just so I cut straight because you have no idea how many weird cuts I've made in the past. And also it just kind of keeps the fabric lay together a little nicer and look a little nicer. Now what makes carbon fiber so great is the weave pattern that you're seeing right now. What people don't realize is there are millions and millions of little tiny fibers all being woven together. And that's what makes carbon fiber so strong. When it's bonded with epoxy, it is, nearly unbreakable it's wonderful material and that's why you see it on supercars and jewelry and airplanes and all that stuff and it just so happens that it also looks really cool all right we've got our stack of carbon fiber here you can see all the different layers that we've got it's kind of a mess but we're stacking it up and you can see this is going to turn into a sheet all right, so remember the melamine? We're going back to that, and we're gonna lay down some mold release. And so this mold release, we're gonna let it dry, and what it's gonna allow us to do is when we go to pop the mold after the epoxy is put down, the epoxy will not stick to this, and we can pull everything off with relative ease. All right, we have all our gear here, and the next step is to actually start laying up the sheet. So I've got my clamps ready. I've got my mold, which is the melamine wood. I've got the carbon fiber. I have our epoxy and I have some mixing sticks and brushes. We have our AstroTech epoxy. This is a part A and B one to one ratio. So I'm gonna mix up some part A and B together. What that's gonna do is it's gonna start to catalyze. Thankfully a long enough working time that this isn't gonna be an issue, but we're gonna mix it up and then we're gonna start layering it onto the carbon fiber. I'm using all eight ounces of the AstroTech epoxy. In situations like this where you're working with carbon fiber, it's usually a good idea to over pour your epoxy and have extra just in case because you do not want any dry spots in the carbon fiber. It will ruin the entire thing if you end up with dry spots at the top or in the middle or whatever. So we're gonna go a little more liberal with our use of the epoxy and that's a good thing. All right, this is my favorite part of the entire process is laying up the carbon fiber. Now to start, I'm just gonna pour a little epoxy right in the middle and start brushing it around. The goal is to wet all of the carbon fiber. We want all the fibers to be completely wet with epoxy before we move on to the next layer. Now, the reason this is my favorite part is look at how pretty it is. This is where you can start seeing the carbon fiber have that really nice sheen to it. It just looks gorgeous. All right, so now we're gonna take our next step to the second layer. We're gonna plop this right on top with the wet carbon underneath. 
some of the epoxy is going to saturate into the fibers from underneath but we're still going to put some on top and continue to wet it remember when i said we're going to be a little liberal with the epoxy it's better to have more epoxy than less because when this is all said and done we're going to clamp this down and it's going to squish any excess epoxy out the sides so we just keep doing this over and over and over like a bazillion times until we have all of our layers. So it's a little tedious and this is also why it's important to make sure that you have enough working pot life with your epoxy so it doesn't cure on you while you're doing this and you just keep plugging along, wetting each layer of carbon fiber as you stack it up. So depending on the weight of the carbon fiber, Carbon fiber has different weights. You can buy really, really thin fabric or thicker fabric. This is kind of an intermediary thickness of fabric. And depending on the thickness of or weight of the fabric that you're using depends on how many layers you need to reach the desired thickness of your sheet. So in this situation, each layer of carbon fiber that we're putting down is approximately 0.55 millimeters in thickness. And so I can calculate exactly how many layers of carbon fiber I need to achieve the overall thickness. And I usually go a little thicker just because you can always sand down a ring a little bit. You can't magically add more material. For everyone that knows me, knows how much I love carbon fiber. I personally think it is the most advanced material on the planet. It is the most beautiful material on the planet. It just has a really cool appearance. I love the use of it. I love everything about carbon fiber. So uh, this is actually how I got started in this is I was making carbon fiber molds and things like that. And then one day I broke my wedding ring and I wanted to see if I could make my own. And so I started layering up some carbon fiber like this. I didn't even use a vacuum bag or anything. I just kind of used some pieces of wood and I had mold release and just went for it. And it came out great. My first one came out fantastic. And I just did this in my garage. This was like eight years ago when I made my first carbon fiber sheet and then made a ring out of that. All right, now for this last step, we are going to put the top of the melamine on. And this is essentially our mold. Um, as you can see, we're doing this without a vacuum bag. Most carbon fiber is made in a vacuum bag setting because you pull the vacuum out and then the pressure of the atmosphere pushes down and gives you the same pressure concept. Right here, I have two sheets of wood and I'm compressing it and I'm using the C-clamps to clamp down on it. So in this situation, we have plenty of pressure. It pushed out the epoxy on the side. It did everything we needed to do and we're able to get a nice sheet of carbon fiber out of it. And there it is, there's our sheet of carbon fiber. We just popped the mold. So as you can see, it's not really that good looking right now. We've got to clean it up, but we have a carbon fiber sheet. So we're heading over to the lapidary saw right now. And the lapidary saw is gonna help us cut off all those weird edges and the excess epoxy that squished out the side. And we're gonna make this look like an actual nice sheet of carbon fiber now. We use a lapidary saw to cut carbon fiber because it has a diamond blade on it and the diamond blade will cut through the carbon fiber no problem. We need also some water to keep it cool. If you were to use like a skill saw or band saw or something like that, it will cut, but it's going to dull your blade very, very, very quickly. And there it is, there's our beautiful sheet of carbon fiber. You can see the edge of the layer stacked up. You can see everything came out just wonderful. This doesn't have a super high gloss finish, but it has a fairly nice satin finish on it because we're pulling this off of a sheet of wood. If we were pulling off a proper mold with like a glass mold or a fully prepared gloss mold, it would have a mirror finish on it. All right, let's head over to the drill press and we're gonna start cutting out a ring blank. We're using diamond tipped hole saws and we're gonna use the carbon fiber sheet we just made to actually make a ring. We 
got our blank and now it's time to start moving over to the lathe. We're gonna put this on the mandrel and we're just gonna true up one of the sides, make sure it's nice and cleaned up. We got the OD down. I don't usually cut all the way through the edge because it sometimes splinters on the other side. I usually leave just a little bit and then I just sand that off real quick. It's just a trick I've learned after making thousands of rings by hand. All right, time for hand sanding and shaping. You know the drill, we're gonna dip this in water, we're gonna keep it wet, and we're gonna sand and shape because we don't want it to get too hot. When it gets too hot, that's when the epoxy starts to break down and it delaminates. Not to mention it burns the crap out of your hands. All right, we've got the outside sanded, shaped, and the next step is to polish it up. So we're gonna go through a three series step of polishing, a rough, medium, and a mirror. Boom, look at that. Look how good that looks. We just made this with stuff from Home Depot. Not bad. All right, we're moving to do the inside. We're gonna put it into the jaws of the lathe and start shaping the inside. Now, I'm just lightly putting the sandpaper in there to get the shape. It doesn't take a lot of pressure and just going nice and easy. For reference, this is a very low power lathe. So if something were to happen in this situation, I just maybe have a banged up knuckle or something like that, which I've done before. I would never do this on a very high powered lathe that can break a finger. So just keep that in mind for anybody that's gonna give this a go at home. Um, don't do this on anything that's like a big old metal lathe with a lot of power. And just like the outside, we're gonna sand and polish the inside until we have our desired finish. And there it is. We literally just made a carbon fiber ring from raw carbon fiber fabric. Like this is as a scratch as you can possibly get. And it's something that you can do right in your own garage. Now, as you know, we do have a pure carbon fiber ring available on our website. The difference between this carbon fiber and the carbon fiber on our website is the carbon fiber on our website is made through uh, high grade manufacturing processes. So you're gonna have a tighter weave, a stronger bond, and it's gonna have an overall better finish. But I just really wanted to create this video because this is how I made my very first carbon fiber ring like eight years ago and I wanted to show you how you can actually do it in your own garage a lot of people don't know that and I think that's really cool because this is something that you know if you want a car part or something like that it costs thousands and thousands of dollars and it has to be super engineered with molds and vacuum infusion and sometimes autoclaves and all these fancy tools but the reality is that somebody can just do this right in their own garage too and that's really cool I love that Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe because we're going to have some more videos coming out soon and I'm very excited to release them. Thank you for watching and until next time.